Welcome to Total Drama Yokovachi Island. Here we have 18 different contestants, all ready to do whatever it takes to win this game. Betraying, gaining friendships that may not be real, maybe a little bit of lying and cheating. Each one of them will have to endure immense stresses outside in the wilderness without any cabins or shelter. Each tribe will have to build their own shelter and each team will have to gather their own food and boil their own water. Ages ranging from 18 to 48, all with their own stories and reasons to win. So with everyone standing at the beach in front of me slash Chris or whatever, the host in general, questioning a random contestant, Emily, why did you come to play this game? So I feel like her answer would be something along the lines of her introduction, like born in Kenya, eventually came to grow up in America. She didn't always have much until recently where she found good fortune, but she wants to prove that she doesn't need fortune to get far in life. She can do it on her own volition, and she hopes everyone here holds themselves to the same respect. Clive, why did you come here? What makes you think you're gonna win and stand out in this game? And immediately, he's probably a little bit nervous being immediately put on the spot, but he's probably saying something like, I'm not the greatest at sports or, you know, like nature, creating fire, any of that. I am very book smart. I do think I can complete puzzles very easily. All right, Amelie, Clive, let's talk to, you know what, Sheila. Sheila, what do you expect to gain out of this game except maybe money? In which I feel like he's more than ready, happily excited. He's like, you know, I'm trying to be here to prove to myself that I'm about this shit. My family don't think I'm about it, but I am. I do think Sheila would probably be very open immediately just say to everyone like, you know, I am diagnosed with autism, but that will not affect me in any way. A matter of fact, I believe my social game here might be better than some others. And the fact he says outright is very good. I appreciate it. Respectable. Honey, some people may obviously have a couple questions about your outfit choice on a game like this, survival and stuff. Well, what's up? And Honey, you know, he's immediately like, Well, I'm a drag queen, so it's just how I do things. I'm here to kill shit. I could have won this game show. I could have won Big Brother. Don't matter. I'm about it. I'm hoping to make some friends that will last forever in memories. You know, that, that that's like, that's very respectable. I respect that answer. And it's like, I think, not up to a selfish standard either. All right, last one before we divide the teams. Draco. I just want to say, I like your name. What's up, my dude? Second, do you even have any idea how to survive in a world like this or out here with the basic skills you need? I feel like Draco, he's like, want me to be for real? I have no idea. My strengths coming out here aren't particularly that of survival. I am more here for the game show element. I do believe I can be useful in challenges but besides that i i don't know that's not my cup of tea so you know make make someone else make it i'm like all right well everyone is gonna be given like a wrapped up buff and then they're gonna unwrap it revealing which tribe and team they are on everyone please unwrap the buffs now all right everyone is with their new tribes we got honey casey clive clav logan and amelie representing the shrimp shufflers seattle Catalina, Ginny, Z, Angel, and Shilo. You guys represent the Outer Outlaws. And then lastly, we got Draco, Aubrey, Recon, Pei, M, and Amaya representing the Zodiac Zebras. You guys may now travel to your tribes. Good luck. So this is gonna be like the moment in the show where they're walking back and then there's gonna cut to like them talking about themselves and whatnot. So I'm gonna say the first one it transitions to to like showing that is Amelie. So she explains how once again, she was born in Kenya in which it wasn't good at all for her or her parents so they did have to eventually settle over here to america hoping for a better life in which only recently did they finally find and achieve that goal and happiness they were looking for she wants to prove that she's her she wants to be her she wants to be the queen of the game she wants anyone who thinks they're in particularly smarter than others or tech smart just anything that could be very fine or technical she wants to them gone. She is a little afraid of the people who are creative, can think, can talk not to mention that and bully she's gonna try her best not to come off as a bully even though she knows that her confidence may proceed as such but if she sees some actual bullying she's not gonna fuck with that she's gonna stop that immediately 
Now, for Clive talking, I feel like he says, you know, I'm a little nervous due to me not being the greatest at stuff. Like, I'm not weak, even though I do like flowers. Pansies, marigolds, they're pretty nice. My kind of goal is to be the books and brains to someone brawn. Someone strong to kind of shield me to get to the end. I want to be the Cody to someone Sierra. So I feel like when they finally arrive at their tribe, you know, they're looking at everything. They're like, all right, we got, you know, a little camp area to start setting up, hopefully. They all probably do visit a little bit of everything just to scope out the area, make sure everything is good and all right. All meeting and greeting. I think Clav and Clive would immediately find it humorous that their names are similar. And Clav is like, you know, I I'm pretty excited. You know, while the others talk, he says to meet someone else, you know, that's kind of on my level, someone I do appreciate. You seem like a chill dude. I think we could talk about stuff. You like Skyrim? And Clive is like, eh, it's all right. I'm more of an Elden Ring dude. And Clav is like, oh, bro, Elden ring is fire and then they start talking about their builds and stuff i do think they would bond quite well amelie and casey i feel like would probably be the next two to kind of like talk on their own face to face casey's like well i'm pretty sure you're the tallest girl here in the entire competition i'm almost positive i'm the shortest one in the entire competition and we are on the same team H how do you feel about that i think amelie just finds it a little humorous she's like you know opposites usually attract you know we can be like a good team maybe i feel good about every Everyone else here I think we got a good mix of people everyone can bring their own stuff to the table now Logan she is the contestant that's 48 and honey I do feel like she would ask that she's like so like how old are you and Logan I don't think she'd be ashamed at all and I think out of everyone she probably knew that they were gonna guess she was the old one so she's like you know I am the 48 year old one I'm not gonna try to be the mom of the group but it may just so happen to look like that because I am I'm actually very good at nature. I'm good at starting fires, creating my own stuff out of nature, hammocks, water venting to purification systems. Matter of fact, if you give me two plastic forks and a cardboard box i can make you a very nice sub base setup i feel like honey's like oh hey guys logan just said they can make fire and casey you know she immediately likes this because unlike amelie who you know she kind of gets along with she does like kind of other smarter people as long as they're not like full of themselves or snobbish so casey's like oh logan bet you you can actually do that like you can actually make fire and stuff all right well, then what the hell are you bringing around the hot spring for you gotta come over here come over to the camp area so i think casey immediately takes logan Logan over there she's probably gonna ask for Amelie's help in which she tells the others to like go collect wood sticks you know all that whatever in which I do think they do so in a group probably talking getting along Logan's teaching Casey and Amelie how to get some coconut shavings off the coconuts they got from the imported trees that are definitely not known for this region trying to get a fire started and getting some sticks not a bad start but here we have outer outlaws now heading to their tribe now for the confessionals we are gonna start with z so z is a little bit different than the other contestants considering he didn't even really want to be here he probably explains like yo I i'm mostly here because i got peer pressured by my family with heather being my cousin and all they expect a lot out of me in this game, but if you want me to be honest, I couldn't care less. But at the same time, if Heather's bitch ass can do it, I can do it. If she can play a great social game with being a bitch, then I can play a great social game by saying nothing. And he's kind of the complete opposite of Jenny, where she's like, hi, 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 my name's Jenny, and I do know this game means business and backstabbing any of them. I have to do that, but I really want to make friends here, like the lifelong ones, and I'm just so excited to be in this bitch. You don't understand. I do think a lot of people underestimate me, but I do plan that and use it to my advantage, because once they really get to know me, we'll all be friends in the long run, and I can't wait to get to know these people and show them what I can do in the challenges. So, I think immediately Seattle might be a little bit bold. He's like, all right, guys, low-key, we should immediately get started on this shelter. Because I've been in situations where it rains. I've been in situations where you out in the cold or it's raining, it's storming, thundering, animals getting your shit. You don't want that. And that's why I feel like Kata, she's like, yeah, whenever I used to go camping and people couldn't get their tents built or they fell down while it was raining, the moments we had to spend in rain were terrible. It was 
is cold and even if you get rained on for like less than six minutes you're gonna be shivering and cold if there's no fire which there probably won't be considering it's raining so i'm kind of wish yeah we we need to we need to start building the shelter that's probably what the other people are doing the better we can sleep the better we can conserve energy which is the better we can do in challenges so let's do this as a team yay <laughs> so seattle probably instructs he's like me and z will be the one here building stuff and putting shit together putting the bricks in the foundation kata angel go get food go get water try to find just some random stuff whatever we could use shilo jenny whatever coconuts cat and angel bring back get me shavings off those as well as getting sticks their area is not really that produces a lot of wood or sticks or something so i feel like sheila and jenny they're probably gonna try their best at like caves or in the front of the ocean just getting whatever they can find that's burnable some plants might be growing here and there digging them out getting them that's when i feel like seattle and z realize and they you know go inside of this cave they're looking around they're like oh my god this could actually be our shelter this looks fire this ain't gonna rain Se seattle's crying he's like hell yeah we can do this bro so that's when i feel like you know he calls back or like shilo jenny stop playing in the water with the crab get your ass over it. so i feel like that's what they do he's like look at this cave it's perfect we still need the stuff to make fire, but I want you to go tell Cat and Angel that I want all four of you working on getting food, some sticks or whatever if you can find it. We don't need as much as I thought we would since we don't got build a shelter. We have a huge head start on the other teams, guys. We, we can do this. And so I think with that, they do build a little bit of confidence. At first, they weren't sure about Seattle's boldness, but he knows what he's talking about. He's fine and he's doing the work. He's putting the plans together and it's working. So I I feel like everyone's probably gonna search and do their own thing eventually while like searching for rocks and stuff kata like slips but only a little bit but she does yelp you know and like surprise angel kind of hears and she comes over she's like oh you all right you all right kata's like yeah i'm fine and angel's like all right good and then she looks at the camera and she just like whispers she's like damn bro i hope her ass fell broke a leg i wanted her gone zodiac zebras finally arriving to their tribe which is the farthest away poor guys all right aubrey she's kind of looking around she's like you know I, I still can't really believe i'm here low key but like dead ass i'm for sure not going through all this no way i did everything i did to get here just to bitch out and not make a name for myself not only am i here to win every challenge that i possibly can but the game Period. I know I need to be adapting to the game as social dynamic, blah, 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 sincerity, etc. dialogue tree. But I think even without being sincere, I can fool the others, have them mistaken for friendship. It shouldn't be too hard. These people probably wanting friends. They're like lifelong stuff. I'm here for the money, bro. If you ain't here for the bread, you here for the crumbs. After that, we got the big M. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff to do here for the thrill of the game, but I'm just kind of here for the money. Yeah, I'd like to meet my best friend, and yeah, I'd like an Unbreakable duo, but I can't focus on getting too developed. I need everyone to know that I'm just a vote. I'm not a person that will win until eventually I do, because I have no choice. I need me. My mom needs me. She needs this money, and at the end of the day, I'll do anything to have my name on that check. No Nike, except I'm going to do it on guy. So I feel like after everyone, you know, talks a little bit, introduces themselves, you know, says their name, Draco might be the first one to pop up the questions like hey the sun might be setting soon and i know there's a challenge tomorrow so we should probably do something about shelter do something about bed so me personally i'm gonna start go getting stuff i'm gonna start trying to break down bigger limbs maybe some tree palms anything to like use as a makeshift bed but if you want me to be honest like look everyone i low-key might just go to the ocean right hear me out bury my body in sand as long as it's not raining use that as a blanket and i'm asleep so i'm doing this more for y'all than i am me because i'm gonna be sleeping good regardless but y'all do what you want if you want to help me you help me if not then relax so i think pay immediately takes this as an opportunity to go like talk to him in which i feel like while they're walking picking up stuff and you know he's like you know draco says 
You know, Pei, be honest, out of everyone, I didn't expect you to come help me, but this shows character. This shows that you're about it, and I respect it. In which I feel like Pei kind of looks at him, and she, she's like, nah, I just think you're cute. I like you, and I want you. I'm gonna go tell Recon you asked for his help, and you're gonna say you did, or else. Oh, and also, bye, Draco. Now, Draco, he he's just standing there, right? He's, like, starting to sweat. He... He is the one. He's the dude that puts people in their places, makes people nervous, and he's the one that gets shit crunk. And he's over here sweating, nervous as shit because of pay. You know, he's like, no way that just happened. Then Recon, you know, he comes over here. He's like, hey, pay said you wanted my help or something. Like, I didn't know that, but I'm glad to help. I'll, I'll do anything I can, Loki. I just want to be helpful. You can, you know, you can count on me. And Draco, as much as he wants to say, what the hell just happened? He's like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, all right, just, you know, you see those, like, bundle of shit over there? Just go brush through the shrubs, see what you can collect, and I I'ma just go over here. And you got Pei over here, you know, whispering in Amaya's ear while, you know, like, they're getting coconuts or something. She's like, didn't Draco come off a little strong and... He, he's a little weird, I won't lie, and Amaya's like, what you mean? I feel like Pei's like, well, I was talking to Draco, and he said that he was surprised I even came to help him, and that if I actually wanted to be useful, I'd go get Recon. I don't want you telling anyone this, but Draco, he, he a little boldish, but maybe he's just having a bad day or something happened, I don't know. If he said that, don't you think you should just kind of tell people, because that's an easy first down. She's like, well, that's the thing. We can't get information out of him if he's already mad mad at us or he knows that we're plotting against him if we want to do this the right and smart way of Maya, me and you just wait see what else he does and you know if we lose let's see who he scrambles to and then let's tell everyone because then we can see who's really honest and on his side potentially ours so I feel like while Aubrey and Millen are like picking up sticks at the ocean front or whatever, she she looks to Millen. She's like, man, I can't believe the nerve of that bitch make me come pick up sticks. Like if I want to do on my own volition, that's something. But make me come out here pick up stick, you know, like I'm giving a hand job to group, bro. That's not what I'm here for. And she just kind of throws the sticks down. She's like, fuck it, man, I'm out of here. So Millen grabs all the sticks. He takes it back. You know, they just start saying up their little whatever. Aubrey's mad, but she doesn't want to tell other people. In which Amaya goes to Mill and she just, you know, Amaya's like kind of whispering. She's like, yo, what, what's up with Daphne back there? What, what's wrong with that bitch? I feel like Millen's like, well, I think Draco may have just gotten under her skin. Amaya's like, Draco? Aw. Oh. So she doesn't say it, but in her head, she's like, damn, what Pei said must have been true. And as the sun sets, it seems that all the tribes and teams have settled into their camping areas and have gone sleep for the night night or is everyone actually asleep or is someone in the night conspiring and doing something find out next time where we will see them in their first challenge lots of drama and sides being taken along with the first campfire ceremony and the first person out of this game let me know in the comments the way you want to see this your way your favorite characters the characters you like the least rank all 18 of them if you want you if you want to thank you guys very much for watching this make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to and i dare every single one of you to have a good day by the way draco isn't up he's just sleeping in the same